you need to learn some manners. Also me, I need to learn some manners. <laughs> Why is it important to not put your elbows on the table? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I thought it's just something my parents made up. We just made I'm up. William Hansen, an etiquette coach, and I'm here to answer the internet's burning uh, so? etiquette questions. Burning this etiquette is questions. Etiquette support. What does he have on his pocket? Is it a... At what is that? Is that a handkerchief? That's very cute. Dude, this tea set though? That's so fancy. Dolly Marole asks, I always do my best to have good table etiquette, but I still mm -hmm. genuinely do not understand the no elbows on the table rule. Why is that important? Three exclamation marks. Edward, hello. The no elbows on the table rule goes hello. back to the medieval times in medieval. Europe, where they were eating from trestle tables. They would put these benches out with sheets of wood. Oh, on wait. I remember this one because I was watching a tasting history video because it's not a real table. It's a flimsy one. They just made this this thing. It's not very sturdy. That's why you don't put your elbows in there or the table collapses. <laughs> I got manners. I simply choose not to use them. I remember this one. I actually know the answer to this one. Yes, one plus one point. Top. If you put your elbows on the table, the table would tip. And the food I knew it. Everywhere. I knew Obviously, it. That's not very good etiquette. And so I knew the it. etiquette and not to put your elbows on the table. We do really <laughs> still abide by the no elbows on the table rule because I think it, it looks really ugly. At Quellinks is saying, what's the proper way to stir the tea clockwise or anti-clockwise? Great question. The, and the answer is neither. Instead, neither. we stir in a back and forth 612-612 motion, <laughs> gently flicking the teaspoon at the top of the cup. 612, 612 motion, the way he explained it is so fancy. Fourth, 612, 612 motion, gently flicking the teaspoon at the top of the cup. Not gently flicking that teaspoon at the top of the cup. Not banging around like that, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Set it back in line with the handle. And 612, 612, legendary, okay. Is asking, actually, f this. this site. <laughs> I'm learning how to cut cheese for charcuterie. No hook to allowed on the tea, okay? No, no, no. Do not hook to on the spoon. Stop. <laughs> well, you live life on the edge. Here comes our cheese selection. Ooh, you. cheese. You don't want to take the best bit of the cheese for yourself. And the best bit of the cheese, cheeses that are made in the round, is the nose of the cheese. And on this blue cheese here, that would be this bit. So we wouldn't cut like so, because Why you'd be not? taking the creamiest bit for yourself, and that's not good manners. Instead, we are going to cut down, keeping the original shape, and then we would place that cheese on our... No. You know what? What I will do? I will take the best bits for myself and uh, everyone else can just suck on that, on the rest. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I didn't know there's an etiquette for cutting cheese. What the hell? Why would I order cheese if I don't get the best part? Right? Also, here's the thing. If you order this, shouldn't you get the best part because you're the one who ordered it? Also, if you're going to pay for it, it's like, do. Oh, I, I'm not sharing the best part. I'm going to take the best part. Although I don't know what this tastes like. I haven't tried this one yet. Who cut the cheese? That guy did. <laughs> but what if I order the cheese? Have you ever thought about that? Who cares how I cut the cheese? I ordered it. I'm lactose intolerant, by the way, so... <laughs> down keeping the original shape and then we would place that cheese on our individual plate we have a question now from joe p e haley how do you eat your peas excellent question you Cue don't eat peas. peas so. thank you so much i know how to eat the peas you know how you eat the peas you don't eat them with a fork or a knife or a spoon you need a straw and you slurp it <laughs> you gotta slurp the peas through the straw so you it doesn't escape the fork because if you use the fork the peas are gonna escape it's gonna boing 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 everywhere and if you use the spoon it's just why were you a spoon you use a straw and you slurp it 
<laughs> Just ordered the That's my peas from the nearest available tin. What we don't do is scoop like this. In really casual dining, that might be permissible, but in more formal dining, we're going to use both the fork and the knife. Why? Some people do this. I think this is more difficult to keep those peas balanced. You see, there we go, one's gone. It's much better to just spear them onto the tines of your You spear them? Eat, like so. Oh At the God. etiquette man That's who's so asking, work. is cheersing or clinking your them. glass on the table proper etiquette? Oh, so many people do it. But it's not actually correct. In formal <laughs> dining, you're drinking from fine glassware. Dude, that part was so posh. This part right here is like, actually, this this part right there is execu executed perfectly. And his voice, the way he says stuff, is so d condescending. <laughs> Many people do it, but it's not. And also those correct. eyes. It's like, In mm. formal dining, you're drinking from fine glassware. Piece that's by expensively piece. Made. And if you do start smashing your glasses together, you're going. Ah, oh, you eat them piece by piece. Uh, all right. All right to hear the clink of glass all over the floor and that'll somewhat ruin the meal. We have a tweet from at Shelley Leahy. No, but why should we care about etiquette? Like who the f cares about which fork goes where? Why does it matter? Yes. I put in block capitals. Why does it Two matter? Strong opinions on this. Etiquette is important to everybody. If you are a user of Earth, then you need etiquette and manners. No one is exempt from that. Predominantly mm -hmm. what I'm focusing on today is Western British American etiquette. At Druvy Modi 10 is saying, who even decides table etiquette? Like I'll keep the fork however I want without giving some secret message on whether I like the food or not. Okay, secret so there message. is some etiquette fake news that does the rounds on social media. There is a graphic showing the different positions to put your cutlery in base. Wait, that's not real, this thing? This thing is now real? Did not like. Excellent. Finished. Next dish, pause, start. Hmm. Cutlery in based on whether you liked the food or not, whether you're ready for a second plate. It's a load of rubbish. The only positions you put your cutlery in when they're not being held in your hand is to indicate that you are resting or if you are finished. When we're resting, the cutlery goes like so. When we're finished, mm -hmm. in Britain, we would put the cutlery together, but in other parts of the world, that might be at a slight angle, and in France, the fork might be turned over. That is what sure waiting real. staff are looking for. At Wasim NYC is asking, is it ever okay to... Well, this British man said it's not real. Maybe it's not real in uh, Britain. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The only indication that I would say that I'm done eating the food if is, is if there's no more food. On the plate. That's it. That means I need more food. <laughs> I don't know. Interrupt someone in a conversation. Short answer, no. And if it is okay, which it isn't, when is it an appropriate time? I mean, look, if they're on fire, then you might perhaps need to say, I should stop you there. Uh, your trousers are alight. But other than that, let them finish. But note to everyone else, a conversation is meant to be like a game of tennis. You're not meant to hold the ball and not let it go. At Wait, what if they won't stop talking? That's my question. Okay, it's it's rude to interrupt someone in the middle of their monologue, but at the same time, what if they don't give you a chance to say your piece? Peace. <laughs> piece by piece. You know what I mean? Because sometimes when you talk to someone, they just keep talking and talking and goes on and on and on and on, and they don't really give you a chance to respond. What do you do? Especially if like someone is lord dumping on you. This is not based on reality, I'm just asking. What if someone is lord dumping on you and they don't allow you to say anything? Is it still rude to interrupt them while they're talking? <laughs> this is, uh, you know, hypothetically speaking, you know? Hypothetically speaking, if someone is lord dumping on you. Just, just a question. What if they don't stop talking about One Piece, right? Right. What if they don't stop talking about One Piece? What if you're talking to me and I don't stop talking about One Piece? Is it rude to interrupt me? 
Yes, because this is my stream. But for other people, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's continue watching this very distinguished gentleman. Virgin Radio Toronto are asking, is it wrong to taste a bottle of wine at a restaurant and then send it back because you don't like it? Well, the restaurant are going to love you because you're going to be paying for the first bottle and the second bottle. The oh, only you reason pay for the whole thing? You, that you can send something back is because there is a problem with the wine because it is corked and that's where there's been a problem in the storage process. And by the time you get the wine to about here, you will know that it is corked. It will stink. This is from Cork. B1 Acker, how TF do you eat a big ass burger in a non grotesque way? Well, that's an excellent question. Thank you. There's no way. Now, this burger, this is huge. No, There's no way. That big. So instead. Instead, you know, actually, I know the answer to this one. How do you eat a big ass burger in a non grotesque way? You just unhinge your lower jaw. Easy. Unhinge your lower jaw, swallow the whole thing. That's your answer you're going to deconstruct it first with your knife and fork take the top of the bun you're off, ruining the burger stop a little bit and then eat like so don't At you ruin Richard the burger no. is asking what fork etiquette do you use i'm sure i'd get roasted in europe for my very american knife and fork etiquette well yes there are some differences in britain when we're using a knife and fork together they are both mm -hmm. held at the same time the knife stays low we obviously don't put the knife anywhere near our mouth and the food is conveyed via the fork and in britain the tines of the fork the prongs always face downwards now in america they will start like this cut a little bit of food place the knife down <laughs> on the edge of, <laughs> of course this next answer is to unhinge your joy you just unhinge your jaw though, it's easy. With the plate, turn the fork over, stab and eat, pick up the knife, cut another little bit of food. This is an aerobic exercise, this is not relaxing in any way, so we don't suggest eating like that in Britain, but of course in America it's perfectly correct if that's how they wish to eat. Mr. Rickson is saying that according to etiquette expert Emily Post, there are three proper ways to eat spaghetti. What? How there do are? You do it. Thank you so appetizing well emily post wrote sauce? her book in america at the turn of the 20th century now i don't know about the etiquette but... that's a bland ass spaghetti where's the sauce there's nothing on it it's just spaghetti what the hell do people eat like this do people in do british people eat spaghetti without sauce what the what's going on <laughs> i don't understand this where's the sauce Mr. Etiquette Man. Back then, but I don't think there were three ways to eat spaghetti, but today there is only one way. You are not going to cut your pasta. I will cut the spaghetti. Form. It is just eaten with the fork upturned in the dominant hand. And you go in from the edge of your spaghetti, from the twist edge. No, I start from the center. Twist little parcel, and then eat like so. I will start from and the center. lol, it's Lawrence, says, what is the worst etiquette sin ever? If you Hello, do not crawling. say please, thank Obviously. you, and sorry, as a human being walking on this earth, then you should be put into etiquette room 101 and the key should be thrown away. Those are the absolute basic fundamental things please, sorry, of being thank a human you. being. This one is from at Sassy Frenchy. Do they know the etiquette in France is to arrive 15 minutes late at the host's house really? so they can prepare? on time. This is, is this a real? really interesting one, and I think one that is changing with different generations. Wait, is this real, Magnus? You have to arrive 15 minutes late so the host can prepare? Ah, I didn't know that. I thought it was rude to arrive uh, late. Because here it's like... Well, to be fair, there's this thing called Filipino time, if you don't know, it's like... Filipino time usually means that uh, that person is usually late. Usually late. And when they say they're on their way, they're not on their way. They're still getting prepared, ready to go out of the house. When someone here says, oh, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm going. I'm on my way. They're not on their way. <laughs> uh. But it would be more polite to be on time here, you know? It's to avoid to cut the host unprepared. Ah, so you don't catch them unprepared. Okay, okay. 
nations. So in Britain and in France and several other countries, it did used to be the etiquette that you never arrived on time to someone's house for a dinner. So if I said to you, come for 7.30, you would turn up at 7.40, maybe 7.45. However, I think millennials and Gen Z now are slightly panicked if their guests are not there at the time they have said. So I would say really... Yeah, because I feel like it's right now for me i feel like it's better to be on time because i value my time i value other people's time i don't like wasting people's time except when i'm streaming i'm, I'm kind of wasting people's time when i stream <laughs> but when it's like a physical gathering a physical meeting if i have to be there i try my best to be on time like to be on time oh really hello what are you mean when my GF says she's looking for a parking spot, it means she's still getting dressed at home. <laughs> Hello, tapping. Typing. Hmm. If someone okay. now says to you 7.30, I'd probably go for 7.35. As a host, it's really nice to have those 10-15 minutes just to have a breather, do those final preparations, have a gin and tonic, and generally the friends that don't get the 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minute late rule, generally the ones that don't host. It's all true in Britain, not just in France. No millennials, Gen Z prefer to be five minutes late. Huh. All right. At K Habe is asking, I'm absolutely shocked that so many people think it's shitty to recline your airplane seat. That's why it's there, so you can recline. What do you mean recline your airplane seat? There's not much room. If you recline your seat, there's not going to be space for the next person behind you. That's kind of rude. This person is kind of entitled, dude. Just hire a private jet if you want to recline. <laughs> Oh I've God. never not reclined my seat. My seat stays reclined. Always. Well, I think the cabin crew have got something to say at takeoff and landing about that because you're not meant to have it reclined then. Ah, oh, yes, they're from Austin, Texas, which you can explains. I didn't so even know much. you can recline I your airplane. I would suggest that I haven't if you been are going to recline your seat, before. and you are right at KHB, if you want to recline your seat, you can, but don't do it during the meal service. Do make sure you just sort of slightly check behind you. It's a signal that you are going to do it, and you do it slowly. Don't do it violently. At Ms. Robot. I can't believe someone out there actually thinks it's normal to just recline your seat. That's kind of... Went back to look at some of your art. You look fantastic. Thank you, thank you. I already finished um, another one today. This one. is It's requested by Magnus earlier. Hmm. Very cute, very yeah, yeah, yeah. Waifu coded. <laughs> uh, wait, someone actually requested something. Oh, let me see. Someone request a sketch. I'm in the middle of a of a reaction. Hold on, hold on a minute. Looks very nice, thank you. That's not you, even if I was surprised that... Uh, why is this heart blocking what I'm reading? Choose the appearance. That choose the appearance. That you choose that appearance? Well, you were talking about like, um, Mikela. Mikela. That's why I, I I drew the character like this because you were talking about Nicola and I was like oh yeah, yeah. I need to sneeze I cannot <laughs> I cannot sneeze sad sad day for everyone okay more etiquette what was the question. Butler says, help, this girl is telling me about horoscopes, horoscopes. and I have literally no interest Oh, there in you go. I this was what I was talking about. to get out of this conversation. How do you get out of the Try conversation? Try and pair them off with someone else. Say to them, oh, I've just seen someone over there. I must go and chat to you before they go. But have you met Anna? 
No. I'm going to introduce this person with Anna and off uh, you go. It's much nicer than smart. just going, I've got to go, bye, and then walking off. And Dude, that is so big brain. If you want to get out of a conversation in a public setting, if there's a, like a social interaction going on, just don't say you have to go. Just introduce them to someone else so they could yap to someone else. <gasps> I never thought about that. Because what I usually do before is I just say I have to go talk to somebody. I just leave them. It's like, oh, oh I, I actually have to go talk to somebody. Or like, oh, I have to go use the restroom. But that's actually really brilliant if you find someone and you say have you met this person before let me introduce to you oh my god that's so brilliant i'm gonna do that next time <laughs> if i want to get out of a conversation i'm gonna do that so like oh have you met this person before oh yeah they're lovely yes i just say oh shit while looking panicked and rush off <laughs> How to get out of a conversation? Just panic. Oh, shit. Or just say, Oh, I have... It seems I have pooped my pants. I need to go right now. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Holy moly. That brave arcanine is asking, It feels like unless I hunt down the waiter that we want Italy. the check or bill, we could be there for hours. Is this a thing? The way to get a waiter's attention is purely body language. We don't want any clicking, any clapping or any flapping about. Instead, sort of sit back from the table, make yourself a little bit taller and try and catch their eye as they go past. Keep the hand at the level of the eye and then when they come over, please may have the bill. That's oh my god, that's so... Uh, Ed Azumi is asking, I need a crash course on... Dude, it's kind of a lot of work. You have to meet their eye and they're like, eh, become them all. It's like, ah, that's so much work. I just want to shout. It's like, you, check, now. No, I'm joking. I don't know how to deal with this kind of situation. If I was in this kind of situation, I wouldn't know how to get the check. So I'm just probably gonna rot there. Or maybe I'm just gonna run away. <laughs> I'll just run away without paying. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I have to fart, sorry. Excuse me, I have to fart. <laughs> oh no. Days that Naga hasn't talked about poop. Dude, I was talking about poop earlier. Because I was asking people like if, if they take their cell phones to the toilet. I, I already talked about poop earlier. Mm how to properly address royals. Well, I'm going to take the British royal family. The king and queen are referred to as their majesty, but direct conversation you would say your majesty, and then you would call the king sir thereafter, and Queen Camilla would be ma'am, and that's ma'am as in ham, not ma'am as in farm, and every other member of the royal family, if they have an HRH title, would be your royal HRH. highness, followed by sir or ma'am. What is HRH? At Salt Cheek is asking, honorable, I'm having an internal uh, debacle right honorable. now. A lady is standing in front of me in the train. She looks pregnant, but not really. Do I ask? Do I offer my seat? There is always that slight jeopardy that, of course, you might offend somebody. But the good news is you're probably never seeing them ever again. If you wish to offer your seat to anybody who looks like they need that seat more than you, then yes, you can do that. At Sean Coomins I just ask saying, them if they I want your the seat, yeah. for anyone, always. But I would like some clarification on the optimum distance at which it is acceptable to let the door close instead of enduring that awkward long ish weight and forcing them to break into that slightly embarrassed <laughs> half jog at uh, 2.4 meters no that's a joke there's no correct distance for me to give you it's just what feels right but at least glance behind and check at b day 1961 is asking, oh, how do you get rid of house oh, guests that yeah. overstay their welcome? I have various different tactics. First of all, I might say to them, have you got a very busy day tomorrow? Or I might say to people, can I get anyone anything else? Which again is another passive aggressive piece of British etiquette. Can I get please leave. anyone if anything else? Fails, mm -hmm. You can just flick the lights and hope they get the message. Just turn up the lights. <laughs> well, those are all of the burning <laughs> etiquette questions we've got time for today. Just turn up the lights when they don't want to leave. Thank I you mean, very yeah. much indeed for watching Etiquette Support. Makes sense. You have to be passive aggressive to make someone leave the house if they're not leaving, they're overstaying. Hmm, let me see. 
How do you get rid of uh, um, guests that overstay? Okay, Mr. Fancy Pants. <laughs> I don't even know how. Because now, for the people who visit me, I, I don't really have to get rid of them. They just have to go. They just have to go, you know? It's like they're they're busy people, so they, they go. They don't really overstay. Or like I just say I have to sleep. I have to sleep now. Or like I just say that uh, maybe they they have to take care of something later. I'm gonna ask them. It's like maybe you're busy later, so you know. Thanks for coming. Something like that. I don't know. Hello, rubber duck. How do you get rid of someone who overstays their welcome in your house? <laughs> Hold them by the scruff of their neck and throw them out. That could work as well. Yeah? Just start slowly taking off your hands <laughs> until people leave. <laughs> what if they think it? Um, you know, you're you're signaling something else if you're taking off your pants. <laughs> Oh no. Uh, the Midwestern way is slaps leg and say, Welp, it's about time. <laughs> Welp, it's about time. Mm, that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, I mean, I tell them, okay, time to leave. Get out. Time to leave. Mm. Let's be straight to the point. That could also work. That could also work. Yes. <laughs> Welp. It's about time. Or, you know what? There's there is another way. If they over if they really overstay their their welcome and it's not night out, if it's not nighttime, what I will do is I'm gonna pretend I have to leave. I'm the one who's gonna leave. So I'm just gonna say, Oh, I have somewhere to go. Thanks for visiting me. And hopefully they, they leave. They're not gonna stay in my house if I'm not there. Right? Surely. Uh, but if they still choose to stay, I'm just gonna throw them away. With my massive uh, arms. Mm, that I actually have, for real. <laughs> uh, I gotta go to my bed really fast. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta go to my bed really fast. It's very important. <laughs> That's the best way, yeah. I have somewhere to go, goes to the bedroom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do what you said earlier and just say you pooped yourself. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've got an emergency in my pants. Hmm. I pooped myself. Just launch a ninja bomb. <laughs> launch a smoke bomb. Imagine I got somewhere to go, he's the key to the house, remember to pin the cutscene. <laughs> Yeah, I have somewhere to go. Take care of the cats for me, will ya? Okay, see ya. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Ending song. This is the ending song.